Hi there. It's me, your humble, friendly neighborhood stroke assaulter. Um, I just realized when I was finishing up the research from the aphasia video I've just completed, uh, I left a few things out, and you'll notice the hair is still reasonably organized. So, um, let's talk about apraxia, right? Um, now, apraxia does not necessarily have to deal specifically with aphasia. Apraxia is is related to aphasia and you may or may not have apraxia with your aphasia um and your if you do we're just going to cover some of that so people understand that you may have difficulties with aphasia with apraxia right? so aphasia is an impairment in the ability to use or comprehend words so aphasia is a communications deficit or difficulty right where you don't have the ability to understand words either when they're spoken uh, when they're written uh, either incoming or outgoing you have a difficulty with grammar and syntax you have a difficulty in finding the right word to express a thought right that is aphasia right aphasia is a neurological condition right it's it's in the brain right it's the thinker right for Aphasia issues, you might use picture matching, right? Flashcards. You might use confrontational naming. For example, <clears throat> my mug, right? So this is R2-D2, right? Um, I know this is R2-D2, but what if I can't get R2-D2 out of my head, right? So I'm going to do things like confrontational naming. So that's my Star Wars mug. Um, it's blue and gray. He's a droid. He's a friend of C-3PO. Um, he speaks in beeps and boops. Um, oh, R2-D2, right? And coffee goes in there, right? So you're going to do some confrontational naming, right? Um, you may try writing using gestures. And you may have to, with aphasia, you may have to train your conversational partners to adjust how they communicate to assist you. I've had to do that. Apraxia, at least for verbal apraxia or apraxia of speech, is difficulty initiating and executing voluntary movements and patterns necessary to produce speech when there are no paralysis or weakness of muscles or other underlying difficulties. So that may include um, difficulty producing the desired sound of speech, uh, controlling your rate of speech, controlling your rhythm of speech, Controlling your tone, your pitch, your volume. <clears throat> so, some of the strategies used with aphasia also work with apraxia, right? So, sound repetition, just repeating a word, right? Repeat a word five times. Um, using a metronome, finger snapping or tapping as if you're playing an instrument. I still have to do that from time to time. Um, <clears throat> it's a thing. Prolonging the duration of your sentences. Um, it sounds a bit deliberate. It sounds a bit over dramatic. But occasionally you may have to, while you're communicating, if you notice this is happening, slow your speech down to a deliberate pace. Right? <clears throat> that simple. Other things may be write what you want to say down and then say it right simply just write it down right um, in other cases you may need a more high-tech system such as a computer program kind of like a therapeutic speak and spell so when you're dealing with apraxia right you don't necessarily have to have apraxia and aphasia they're not mutually supporting necessarily so you may have aphasia and without apraxia you may have apraxia verbal apraxia without aphasia <clears throat> but in my situation i had expressive aphasia i had um nomia um the word finding issues and then i had apraxia so not only do i have did, did i have and occasionally still do have difficult getting the word from the thinker right into my mouth and then out to the world and then there's other times where I'm having difficulty finding the word I want to use 
And then there are diff times where I'm having difficulty getting the mouth to form the word. <clears throat> right? Just the, the physical ability in route lizard brain memory to get that word out. Right? Just to, just to, to spit it out. Wow. I just realized how that sound. Right? So, just think about this. You go into a restaurant to order breakfast. Right? Because right after my stroke, I didn't want to be cooking anything because I didn't feel safe doing it. Um, so you go in a restaurant. I was able to read the menu. Had no problems reading the menu. I was able to understand the wait staff. <clears throat> no problem at all. Did you want tea or coffee? I want coffee. I say to myself, now let's spit that out. Right? So the difficulty becomes now ordering bacon, eggs, hash browns, white toast, coffee, and an orange juice, right? What'd that take me? 45, 50 seconds, right? Oh yeah, can I get bacon, eggs, hash browns, you know, white toast, orange juice, coffee, <clears throat> and can you make the eggs over easy? You know, what's that, 45 seconds if that? Now turn that into a six minute conversation in one direction. Because you can't find the right word, you're having difficulty getting the words from the brain to the lips, and then your lips are having difficulty forming the words. <clears throat> I've been there. I understand how difficult, I understand how frustrating, I understand how isolating that can be. I understand you're really not going to want to involve anyone in a conversation. Um, now, keep in mind, apraxia is not exclusive to verbal issues. It's not exclusive to language, right? Now, you may have other oral apraxia, right, or which is considered nonverbal apraxia, which may have difficulties not related to speech, such as smiling whistling, opening the mouth or puffing of the cheeks, um, swallowing, right? Wow. <laughs> Sorry for the subtext. It's completely unintended, right? So when it comes to apraxia and verbal issues, you don't necessarily have to have aphasia. However, for verbal apraxia, just like aphasia, your speech and language pathologist, right, your neurologist and, and other people in your clinical team can definitively help, right? Um, you are going to have a great potential of some form of communication deficit after your stroke. Remember, 25 to 40% of people after a stroke have some form of communication deficit. You're going to need to engage a speech and language pathologist. You're going to, well, you're already going to have a neurologist because you kind of get one of those free with your stroke. So for those of you that are having apraxia um, and aphasia, I understand what you're going through completely. I understand what you're going through. And I understand it's difficult. Now, for those of you that are supporting the stroke assaulter as they get through their recovery of their stroke, and if they happen to have apraxia and aphasia, um, please don't finish their sentences. Um, don't point out their deficits because it's not something inside their control, right? Um, they can't control their rate of speech at times. They can't control their pitch, their tone, their volume at times because the filing system that was their language centers has been completely disruptive and they're trying to piece that back together, right? It's, it's difficult. Um, and, and it doesn't need to be exacerbated by the inappropriate comments by people that mean well, but are jerks, right? So I just thought I'd touch base on apraxia and aphasia <clears throat> and how they are related but not necessarily related 
and then I'm going to do another video specifically on apraxia and what apraxia is in a non-verbal sense. So at that point, if you happen to enjoy, but you know, but what what <clears throat> if you happen to enjoy what you've been watching over the past almost five months, please like, share, subscribe, share with a friend. If there's something you want to see me cover, you can either leave it in the comments down below or you can email me at strokeassalter at gmail.com, right? I say again, strokeassalter at gmail.com. If there's, you know, anyone out there that these videos can help, right? Please, just, I, I'm, I'm grateful to be able to help someone. I know through my stroke journey, some of the topics that I was having difficulties with, it was hard to find the information. So that's sort of one of the things I'm trying to do with this. And then if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or the symptoms of a stroke, right? Such as someone appears to be befuddled or confused. Um, someone appears to be happening to have visu visual issues, right? They suddenly can't see properly, blurry vision, can't see it in one eye, can't see it all. Um, someone who's having a facial droop, either one or both sides. Uh, someone who uh, can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Uh, someone who is slurring their speech. Uh, someone who is stuttering, stammering, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Uh, someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone who um, has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or can't maintain their own body weight. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple could save a life.